G'day and welcome back to Unimig. Today, I'm gonna to share with you nine tips and tricks to improve your stick welding, everything from current settings to dry runs. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. Number one, current settings. There are two parts to your current settings, polarity and amps. It's fairly easy to set up a machine for stick welding since the polarity and amperage range is identified on an easy to read label which can be found on all electrode packets. For example, the HyperArc 6013 3.2mm general purpose electrodes can be used either on AC or DC positive at an amp range between 90 and 130. Welding on DC positive gives a more stable, high penetrating arc, while AC gives less penetration and eliminates arc blow. The way to know if your amps are wrong comes down to a bit of experience. For example, if it's hard to start an electrode, it sticks or the weld metal is sitting on top of the parent metal without burning in, then you know that the amps are too low. On the other hand, if the arc is gouging without filling, leaving undercut and burning really hot, then you know that your amps are too high. With amperage, a good place to start would be in the middle of the recommended range and adjusting up or down by only 5 or 10 amps depending on the metal thickness or position. Unimig has an ultimate stick welding guide available if you'd like to check it out, then we'll leave a link in the description. At number 2, we have arc length. Once you have initiated the arc, it's important to maintain a consistent distance from the joint. Holding it at around 3mm from the joint will give you a consistent, focused and smooth arc. If your arc is too short, then you're going to lower the voltage and the whirlpool will become cooler, resulting in a non-penetrating weld. This also has a potential to extinguish the arc. If your arc is too long, then the voltage will increase, more spatter will occur, the arc will become erratic and unfocused, and this also has a potential to extinguish your arc. When you're first learning to stick weld, keeping a tight arc can be tricky, so make sure to get comfortable, lean on something if you must, to keep a steady hand. Number three, drag your weld. Always drag your weld. As the old saying goes, if it's got slag, then always drag. Pushing the electrode will trap protective slag inside the weld and cause weld defects. The only exception is when you're doing vertical ups. Even then, try to keep a 90 degree angle to the joint as you're weaving upwards. Number four, visibility. Being able to keep the right arc distance and to run a straight bead requires good visibility. Always make sure that you're comfortable so you can see what's happening with the whirlpool and the arc. Also, keep your head out of the fumes. Not only will that improve your visibility, but also minimize your breathing them in. Number five is clean, clean, clean. Stick welding is pretty forgiving when it comes to cleanliness, but you can't just weld over millimeters of rust. Cleaning your metal is going to give you the best possible results. Using a grinder in conjunction with a wide brush is the preferred method and the quickest to clean metal. Remember to also have a good earth connection. Number six, wet is bad. Generally, electrodes do contain some moisture in them. Excessive moisture, especially in low hydrogen electrodes, will cause problems such as wandering or erratic arcs while welding, but there is a solution if you come across this issue. Electrode ovens are designed to rebake your electrodes if they have been left out in an open packet for a while, but the best way to keep them in good condition is to store them in a dry place, preferably sealed, until you're ready to use them. At number 7 we have movement. Running a bead with your electrode is pretty simple, it's a steady straight line. You should never whip it back and forward or use the back step method as this will trap the slag inside the world causing potential defects. Remember to always drag the electrode when stick welding, unless you're doing vertical ups, where you need to push the weld metal uphill using a weaving motion. Number eight, speed. A good travel speed is a consistent one. It's also one that doesn't burn through your parent metal or leave the bead sitting on top of the metal with no penetration. So what's too fast and what's too slow? Moving too fast will result in a high bead along the joint with minimal to no penetration. Moving too slow, your puddle will widen and cause excessive weld metal buildup. And last but not least, number nine, our dry runs. Getting in the habit of doing dry runs is recommended. It's definitely better to find out before you start welding if your elbow is going to bang into an obstruction or whether your welding cable will catch on something whilst you're in the middle of a crucial weld. So get comfortable and make sure there's plenty of room to move. These simple things will improve your welding experience and result in faster learning. Thanks for tuning in on our nine tips and tricks to improve your stick welding. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and we'll see you next time.